Successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. We're connected. That was all pretty painless. In this box, we should have a Beagle camera from Minchion. Min, Mintion. We'll go with Minchion. This is a camera for monitoring your 3D printers in the same way that Octoprint does. It says that it's plug and play. You can connect to it anywhere, anytime, which is interesting. It has auto time lapse, browser access, and a temperature monitor. Okay. Camera resolution up to 1080p, and it can connect to Wi Fi. So I'm hoping I'll be able to connect this end of three here and then remotely monitor my prints. It does say anywhere, anytime. Interesting. Neat little box. We have some instructions, a quick guide manual. What looks to be, yeah, the camera itself. This little base. I think it's supposed to look like a beagle. So on the back, we've got um, a couple of ports. We've got an SD card. We have a USB type C port and a normal USB, the, the big one. Was that A or I'm not sure. We have a Wi-Fi light and a printer light. Pretty simple. We have a UK USB adapter. We have one of those little pins you use for getting your cards out your phone and a couple of USB leads. So we have a USB-C, so that will be to plug in the side here. And we have a USB, oh, I'm terrible with these, mini. I think that's mini, USB mini. No, it might be micro, I don't know. There's a USB plug that will plug in somewhere. Let's get that out of the way. I also have myself a cup of coffee. So quick start, plug and play. It all sounds like I'm gonna have this up and running in no time. So let's see, shall we? See if I finish my coffee before this gets set up. Apparently this little bit here is a microphone. Why would you need to listen to your 3D printer? So plug the power cable into the camera. Plug the power cable into the camera and the power adapter, and then into a power outlet. I'm going to need an extension lead. Yeah, I probably should have planned this a bit better. This is only going to take 10 minutes, so we can unplug the camera. All right, that's plugged in. Plug the USB cable into the camera and the 3D printer. So... The camera is ready for Wi-Fi connection. Camera is ready for a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, right, so I'm going to plug in the printer. Uh, okay, so it's supplying power to the printer because the CR Touch just clicked. That's not ideal, actually. I'll probably isolate that, but let's see what happens. The camera will take one to two minutes when power up. Don't cut off power during this period. Well, we know it's up and running because it's just spoke to us. Put on camera. You could put the camera onto the box of the printer's front side. Oh, it's just saying point it at your printer. Well, okay, we're not too worried about that now. App download and registration. Scan the QR code and download the Beagle app. Okay. Okay, so now you can see what's on my phone. So what are we doing? We're opening the camera and we're going to scan the QR code. Yep, we'll go to the website. Oh, that's because I haven't got my Wi-Fi on the right thing. Okay, I can see my actual Wi-Fi. Right, that's better. So, app download. Let's do it through Google Play. Install. That six pack in 30 days and home workout. I don't know why it's suggesting I might like those. Obviously, I don't need to lose weight. Phones do definitely spy on you. No data collected, no data shared with third parties. Good. As soon as that's ready, there we go. We'll open that. Minty, Minchin, Mintin. Right. Um, let's put something in. Right, there we go. My account doesn't exist. Well, of course it doesn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got to sign up first. Right, I'll put in all this information and then I'll come back. Got to get a code. My code is I hate passwords. Oh, here we go. It doesn't like my name. Okay, so, okay. 
so we're into the app. Please ensure your router is enabled. Yep, wrong password is the main reason. Okay, that was all pretty painless. Use your phone to connect to the camera hotspot. So the phone's got to connect to the camera. It says press the little plus in the corner, so let's do that. Ah, oh, QR scan. This way is easier, it says in the manual. Let's find out. The QR scan configuration only works for the latest camera firmware version. Please upgrade the camera firmware first. Now I'm going to upgrade the firmware before I connect to it. Yes, I heard the voice. Oh, okay, so the camera wants to see the QR code. Heard a beep. I heard the beep, yes. Okay, so what's happening now? I've told the camera, well, I told the app, my Wi-Fi password, it created a QR code that the camera has read. So the camera now should be able to connect to my Wi-Fi. It was a little bit annoying. It wasn't obvious in the setup. It didn't like spaces in my name. It sounded, it looked like it was saying it didn't like spaces in the password. I hadn't put any spaces in the password, which is what confused me. So I took the space out of my name and then it worked. It is actually quite simple if you just use one single word as your account name rather than putting spaces in like I did. My coffee's disappearing. Hasn't got long. Okay, didn't like it. Add a device. Why don't we try the other one? AP configuration. I just spotted, I also put my password in wrong. So actually, let's go back and do the QR one because I typed in my password wrong. So that's not the camera's fault. Okay, now it's not recognizing the QR code. I'm gonna try turning it off and turning it back on again. Oh, I've got no noises now. Do you reckon I should press the, uh, the reset? Okay, well, we have this little tool. And there's a little button. Yeah, you know, that's no sign that actually did anything, but I pressed it. I'm gonna do it for longer. Successfully resetting the camera. It's better. Camera is ready for Wi Fi connection. It's ready. Yeah. I heard the beep this time. Well, I heard the beep last time, but now hopefully I've got the right password. So now we wait again. So again, now. Successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. We're connected. Okay. So that's not my printer. The picture that you can see. Let's try clicking it. What happens? Ooh. And there we go. It's connected. Well, that was actually relatively painless once, once I'd done it properly. So that was all my fault. I was just doing the wrong thing. There you go. It even comes with a mount. Right. So how about we connect the printer? Let's turn the printer on. Turn the printer on. I'm using the Ender 3 version 2 for this. It's running Jaya's firmware and has a CR touch. But other than that, it's completely standard. So there's a bit strange about the screen on the printer. I'm just going to fire it up without the USB lead connected. Yeah, that's better. Now the printer's fired up properly. So because it was powering the printer, the printer wasn't initiating properly into the firmware. So now when we connect the camera and then click connect on my app, we are connected. What happens if we go full screen? Okay. Ooh, I can turn it to switch between HD and SD. It actually looks much better on my phone than it does on the screen you can see. Okay, so what are we doing now? Let's minimize it again. Let's see what options we have. So have a look in the settings. Wi-Fi setting, normal record setting. So Wi-Fi, so it looks like I can change the Wi-Fi options in there. Time-lapse. Okay, so there's quite a few options in the time-lapse. The alternative would be Octoprint. This is quite similar. I mean, you've got some very similar settings to some of the time-lapse applications like Octolapse, which I've used. It works well. It tells you what's on your card, which is nothing at the moment. Time zone. 
Do we care? I am in the UK. Greenwich Mean Time. Camera information. So there's the firmware, 1.1 or 1.1.2. I've got the MAC address, IP address. I'm probably gonna blur all that stuff out because I don't want anybody accessing my camera anyway. Oh, and you can reset the camera by saving the Wi-Fi and then completely resetting the camera, losing the Wi-Fi. Okay, that's good. Share to your friends. No, I'm all right, thanks. I'm sharing to all of you. You're all my friends, aren't you? So, along the bottom, what do we have? We have temperature, so I can monitor the temperatures. Oh, let's see if we can change it. Let's heat the bed to, let's say 50 degrees. I'm looking on the display on the printer to see if that's changed. And yeah, so it's requesting 50 degrees and we see the temperature start to go up. Okay, so while it's doing that, let's change the hot end temperature. And there you go straight away, send it to the printer in the same way that Octoprint does. So while that's all heating up, let's see if we can home the printer. So let's hit home. Okay, so that's home to the X and the Y, so now let's home the Z. Yep, that works. Let's turn the fan on. Hot end cooling fan on and off. Excellent. G-code files to upload. Well, I don't have them on my phone. Of course, you need to slice them. I don't slice them on my phone, I slice them on my laptop. So. I believe there is also a way of connecting. I mean, I've got an IP address. So all I need to do is, is type the IP address into a browser and I should be able to connect directly from my laptop to the PC, uh, to laptop to the camera, which is connected to the printer. And then printer name, it's recognized the printer. I didn't put that in, that's good. There is a, a limited list of printers. They're, they're generally some of the most popular 3D printers, but you need to check that list. If you're gonna buy one of these, check that list first. It actually has the list here. It connects to the internet and goes to a list of compatible printers. Right, back to the app. Stop showing me workout apps. Oh, I've got to log back in. Can anybody remember the password? I'm just gonna let it remember me for now. So, there you go, you can just connect. So what's not connecting now, why is it? Or well, maybe it is, it's just slow. So what I can't see at the moment is any way to connect to your printer when you're not inside the same Wi-Fi network. The camera connects to the Wi-Fi, your phone is connected to the Wi-Fi, so it can just connect to another device on the Wi-Fi. But if I were to leave my Wi-Fi, I'm not going to be able to connect to it, but even now it's not connecting. Why is it not connecting? Let me just try closing the app and then I'll try again. Let's try this one. So it just automatically connected straight into it that time. So I just close the app and open the app and it's fine. Right, so the IP address. Okay, so I have my IP address. Let's, in another tab, let's just try typing in that IP address, see what happens. What's interesting is the printer is still up to temperature. So there's been no, even though I've been opening and closing the app, there's been no signal to tell the printer to cool down. So just watch that if you tell it to do something, but then the app crashes you either need to get back into the app to tell it to cool down again, or you need to come and manually turn your printer off or turn the heating off. It's not loving that, is it? It's not gonna play. Oh, here we go. It's just really slow. Let's sign in. The default account and password of camera is admin. So it's not what's on my app, it's a separate one. Admin, admin. Yeah, no surprise in the password I just used was found in a data breach. I'm sure lots of people use that, just leave it standard. Right, the first thing I'm gonna do change that old password was admin new password will be something else password is incorrect <laughs> success yeah i do that a lot okay let's see what we've got okay so we've got what it's quite similar quite similar to octoprint actually so we have a dashboard we have status and control so probably all the same kind of things that we have in the app just with a different different layout temperature we can see the temperatures that we're running and if we hover over we can see the actual, the goals and what it's reached. What's down the page? Oh, here we go. So we can, we can again, we can change them here. And again, these look very similar to Octoprint. So you've got some default settings there. Printable files, I haven't got any. What can I add? Let's have a little calibration cube, shall we? I don't even know what nozzle's on this. 1.4 I think. So here we go, so we're uploading a file. I'm gonna need some filament. I would like my nozzle to go a bit warmer please, Mr. Beagle. You know what, I'm gonna tell it to 
extrude. Why do it manually when you uh, you have a beagle? I'm sure there's a joke in there about having a dog and barking yourself. I'm not going to lower myself. Right, here we go. So we got all the old stuff out. Well, I think we're ready to print. Let's just see what happens. Let's load and print. The file is started to print. The temperature is rising. I feel like there's a song about that. Well, I won't sing. And the coffee's gone, to be honest. But, you know, it's, it's not bad. About half an hour, I think. And I'll drink cold coffee. But that's done. I'm going to have to put my mug down. Now, I can't remember the last time I ran a mesh on this printer, so let's just hope all is well. For some reason, the video feed is not running. Why is that? Oh, it's, it's, it's really far behind. That's interesting. So, since the print has started, the video... Well, it's not streaming. I would say it's a good... 10 to 15 seconds behind okay so i'm not going to sit and watch that while it does the uh 20 odd minute print so i'll just show you the results okay we're back so let me just turn the printer off because it's a bit loud so let's see what we've got okay we've got a calibration cube that's reasonable all we do have on the back corner a little bit of stringing where the print head moves away to the corner so that the camera can take a picture. I didn't actually intend to do a time lapse on the first one, but that's what happened. So, why don't we have a look and see what the time lapse looks like? Download it as an MP4 and then play it. Oh, okay, so there you go. The light's flickering a little bit. It's okay. I feel like I need to sort some lighting out. I think it's gonna need some brighter conditions to get a good time lapse. So let me play around with some settings. I'll print some other things. I'll play with the time lapse settings, see if I can get any better quality, and I'll show you how we get on. I'll do a print on the Ender 3 S1 Pro, which has the light bar at the top. Let's see if that gives any better image quality. I'll also try with a couple of other printers that I've got, which are on the compatible list. So let's see if they connect to those printers and recognize them just as easily as they did with the Ender 3 version 2. This one it looks horrendous because it's a one mil nozzle it's a bit furry again where the um, nozzle keeps moving away and the top surface yeah it's really terrible but that's not what we're testing what we want to have a look at is the time lapse so we'll just download that one and we'll put the bed back on and let's see what that looks like so we had absolutely no problems adding this printer and running a print so it looks like once you've got your beagle connected to your wi-fi you can just change the printer in the drop down menu and plug it into any printer you like now i understand that most people won't have multiple printers but what it means is when you set up it's very easy to select the printer that you're going to use it with so let's do a few more complicated prints with it and see what we get so with the sidewinder x2 again connected very easily get the temperature up so we can purge the filament through and get printing well i'm pretty happy with that that's three different printers from a couple of different manufacturers that connected straight away and work faultlessly just as they should you'll have to play around with the time lapse settings to get rid of the blobs and things but i think we can safely say that as long as you type your password correctly. This really is a great plug and play camera for monitoring your prints, but also for controlling your printer. If you want to buy one, there are links down in the description where you can also get a bit of a discount just for being one of my viewers. If you want to see my overall impressions and a quick review of this camera after using it for a few weeks, then click here or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.